Hi there. It's December 19th and time for chapter 19 of Luke on our Dis Christmas with Luke series. Let's jump over there and we'll get right into it. This is a longer chapter so it might take longer today. Oh. Jesus and Zacchaeus. <clears throat> Jesus entered Jericho and made his, made his way through the town. There was a man there named Zacchaeus. He was chief tax collector in the region and he had become very rich. He tried to get a look at Jesus, but when he was, but he was too short to see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree beside the road, for Jesus was going to pass that way. <laughs> when Jesus came by, he looked up at Zacchaeus and called him by name. Zacchaeus, he said, "Quick, come down! I must be a guest at you in your home today." <laughs> Zacchaeus quickly climbed down and took Jesus to his house in great excitement and joy. But the people were displeased. He has gone to be the guest of a notorious sinner, they grumbled. Now Zacchaeus was a Jew like them, but he was a tax collector, which means he worked for Rome. And they made their money by collecting more taxes than Rome wanted. And him being a chief tax collector, which means he was in charge of other tax collectors, and he also took a cut of what they took. So yeah, made a lot of money doing that, and they were despised, <clears throat> like any tax collector would be. Okay, we're on verse 8. Meanwhile, Zacchaeus stood before the Lord and said, I will give half of my wealth to the poor, Lord, and if I have cheated people on their taxes, I will give them back four times as much. You got that? That's quite a statement. Jesus responded, Salvation has come to this home today, for this man has shown himself to be a true son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and save those who are lost. Yeah, good for him. The crowd was listening to everything Jesus said, and because he was nearing Jerusalem, he told them a story to correct the impression that the kingdom of God would begin right away. He said a noble man was called away to, to a distant empire to be crowned king and then return. Before he left, he called together ten of his servants and divided among them ten pounds of silver. That was a pound. It, this was actually a, a mina, is what the, 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 the Greek is. One mina is worth about three months' wages, and he divided ten minas, which is about two and a half years' wages, which is a, a sizable amount of money. Okay, but remember, this is a story. This is not history. So he divided among ten of his servants. He divided them ten pounds of silver, saying, "Invest this for me while I'm gone." But his people hated him and sent a delegation after him to say, "We do not want him to be our king." After he was crowned king, he returned and called in the servants to whom he had given the money. He, f he wanted to find out what their profits were. The first servant reported, Master, I have invested your money and made ten times the original amount. Well done, the king exclaimed. You are a good servant. You have been faithful with the little I entrusted to you, so you will be governor of ten cities as your reward. Well, the next servant reported, Master, I invested your money and have made five times the original amount. Well done, the king said. You will be governor over five cities. But the third servant brought back only the original amount of money and said, Master, I hid your money and kept it safe. I was afraid because you were a hard man to deal with, taking what isn't yours and harvesting crops you didn't plant. You wicked servant, the king roared. Your own words condemn you. If you knew that I am a hard man who takes what isn't mine and harvests crops I didn't plant, why didn't you deposit my money in the bank? At least I could have gotten some interest on it. Then turning to the other standing nearby, the king ordered, take, take the money from this servant and give it to the one who has ten pounds. But master, they said, he already has ten pounds. Yes, the king replied, and to those who use well what they are given, even more will be given. But from those who do nothing, even what little they have will be taken away. And as for these enemies of mine who didn't want me to be their king, bring them in and execute them right here in front of me. Wow. Harsh. Harsh. But he's talking about himself, okay? <laughs> Jesus' triumphant entry is Palm Sunday. After telling the story, Jesus went on towards Jerusalem, walking ahead of his disciples. As he came to the towns of 
Bethphage and Bethany on the Mount of Olives, he sent two disciples ahead. Go into that village over there, he told them. As you enter it, you will see a young donkey tied there that no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks, why are you untying the colt?" Say, the Lord needs it. So they went in and found the colt, just as Jesus had said. And sure enough, they were untying it. The owners asked him, why are you untying that colt? <laughs> and the disciples sent to provide, the Lord needs it. So they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their garments over it for him to take a ride on. For him to ride on. As he rode, the crowd spread out their garments on the road ahead of him. When he reached the place where the road started down the Mount of Olives, all of his followers began to shout and sing as they walked along, praising God for all the wonderful miracles they had seen. Blessings on the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. All right, what's this note here? Yeah, Psalms. But some of the Pharisees among the crowd said, Teacher, rebuke your followers for saying things like that. He replied, and I like this part, If they kept quiet, the stones along the road would burst into cheers. The very rocks would cry out. <laughs> Jesus weeps over Jerusalem. But as he came closer to Jerusalem and saw the city ahead, he began to weep. How I wish today that all of you people would understand the way of peace, but now it is too late, and peace is hidden from your eyes. Before long, your enemies will build ramparts against your walls and encircle you and close you in on from every side. They will crush you to the ground and your children with you. Your enemies will not leave a single stone in place because you did not recognize it when God visited you. Yeah. That came true, too. I think about AD 70, most of it was destroyed. Jesus clears the temple. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus entered the temple and began to drive out the people selling animals for sacrifice. He said to them, the, scripture, the scriptures declare my temple will be a house of prayer, but you have turned it into a den of thieves. Yeah. Other gospels go into detail. about He flipped tables over and he was chasing them around with a whip, a cat of nine tails. <laughs> After that, he taught daily in the temple, but the leading priests, the teachers of religious law, and the other leaders of the people began planning how to kill him. But they could think of nothing because all the people hung on every word he said. Right. But we know they will, huh? So that's 19. Yeah. And I like this verse stood out. You know, some of the Pharisees along the crowd said, Teacher, rebuke your follower for saying things like that. You know, blessings on, blessings on the king who comes in the name of the Lord. <laughs> right. And Jesus replied, if they, if they kept quiet, the stones along the road would burst into chairs. That's cool. Well, that's Trevor 19. He is entering Jerusalem. It's kind of downhill from here, but it's 19. We're going to finish this story by Christmas Eve. Yeah, it's good stuff. Good stuff. So stay tuned for next time. Till then, be kind. See you later.